And I want to bring up some of these polling numbers that we're seeing out of CNN, right? The former president now in this poll specifically having a 35 percentage point um, lead. By the way, he's up one percentage point from back in May mm -hmm. as well. Um, several indictments since then. It seems as if no matter what happens, his base is sticking with him. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Uh, it's a very solid uh, support within the Republican uh, primary electorate that's sticking with Trump, no matter uh, the indictment, no matter uh, the criminal liability that he appears to face right now. Um, and, and so it certainly looks like he's on track to potentially uh, win the Republican nomination if he maintains that support and perhaps grows it uh, in the months ahead. And yet, uh, all of this legal activity, these criminal indictments, uh, certainly seem like they would probably be a vulnerability for Trump in a general election. Uh, and, and so the challenge for him is how does he grow uh, beyond that base of support in order to get himself back into the White House? Phil, I'm so happy you brought that up. Brendan, I want you to pivot off of what Phil just had to say, because we're talking about the electability issues possibly the former president is facing in a general election, right? Because it seems as if he's got such this broad lead in the primary, the likelihood of him securing this nomination at this point um, in the race seems fairly high. But when you look at electability, I found this really Really interesting from the CNN poll, 44 percent of Republicans concerned about Trump's ability to win a 2024 general election. You think back to 2020, he had a problem. He lost the midterms 2018. He had a problem with his electability. The midterms 2022, a referendum on the former president of the United States. Will there come a point in which there is a fracture in the support of the former president, considering these electability issues we are seeing? Yeah, it's not surprising to me that people question his electability, but I, what I wonder is whether people actually vote based on that. And I don't think there's a lot of evidence. And I think you're asking a lot of voters to weigh that and make that the determining factor when they go in. Voters tend to vote for people who inspire them. Who, who make them feel like they're on the same side as them, fighting for them. And Donald Trump has been very good at that. And while there's some very obvious questions about whether Donald Trump can get reelected, there are a lot of people who, who simply believe that Joe Biden is uh, very easy to beat. Let's remember, there's a lot of Republican voters who think Donald Trump actually beat him last time. So you, you add that with a bunch of polling out now that shows Donald Trump and, and Joe Biden running head to head in a general election. Um, it really undercuts arguments from a Ron DeSantis or a Nikki Haley that you need to nominate someone more electable. I mean, that was one of the main things, main arguments that was going to be made was you need an electable conservative. And when Donald Trump could hold up a poll showing him beating Joe Biden in a general election, you don't have to worry about electability. You can go with the person who makes you feel something. And Donald Trump clearly makes people feel something a lot more than Ron DeSantis. So, so Robert Gibbs, I'm talking about obviously his electability issues there, but then also the issues of the indictment, right? And what is gonna play out publicly. And, and none of us know what that's gonna look like. And it is mind blowing to even imagine what the next 18 months of all of our lives um, are gonna be. But when you think about the fact that Georgia is gonna be televised, when you think about the possibility of 16 co-defendants, because Eastman said he's not gonna, he's not gonna flip. He's already made that clear. 16 co-defendants may be flipping on the former president. We don't know at this point, right? What could that do? Could that fracture um, the support the former president has? Yeah, I think what we don't know is exactly what you said, is how these cases ultimately play out. Uh, what impact does a guilty verdict have you may not believe the indictment, but what happens when a jury of peers in a very swing state decides, in fact, that the former president broke the law? And again, you're not, you don't have to have a lot of voters move uh, in a general election to make that significant. This is going to be an extraordinarily close race. It's going to be yeah. played out in seven states. And if just a small number of people move in each of those seven important states, uh, and they all move together and away from the former president, uh, you could see a much rosier path for somebody like Joe Biden. 